Hello, I'm Pastor Stephen Gonzalez, and I'm coming to you from Presence of the Lord Christian Church in Corona, California. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to have a time of worship this morning to just lift up the name of Jesus, and then we're going to get into the Word together. Thank you for joining us. Let's worship the Lord.
I'm swept away by the wonder of your love. How one so great could love this one so small. And when I realize the distance between your heart and mine, I'm amazed when you call me to your side. I come to you not in my own strength, but in weakness I embrace the one who
We're going to begin our message this morning in Luke chapter 5, verse 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered him and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. 
And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their, their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Verse 5 that we read says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. That morning near the shore of Lake Genesaret was the beginning of a three-year journey for Peter as he made the decision to follow Jesus along with the other disciples. Have you ever sung this song? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Although Peter desired to be faithful to his master Jesus, it seemed like the three years ended in miserable failure. It seemed that it had all been for nothing. And now all was lost because Jesus was dead. But then... Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to his disciples and he gave to them what we call the Great Commission. And the Great Commission in one form or another is, is in all of the Gospels and I want to read those to you right now beginning with Matthew 28 verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, Go, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, 46, we read, these words. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, 
but tarry or wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And there it is. That, that is the title of my message today. Go, wait. Two verbs. Go, wait. Doesn't seem like you can do the same, th- those two things at the same time, but you, you actually can. And you have to. Imagine yourself inside your home with a member of your family and they tell you that they need something from the store right away. As you begin to go, they say, wait. What, what happens or what do you do when you hear them say, wait? You stop. You stop and you stand still. Why? Well, in that moment, you're doing two things. You're going to the store, and you're also waiting on them to tell you why they asked you to wait. You're doing both things at the same time. Go and wait. I believe this is where the Lord has the church right now. We are going about our Father's business, but we're waiting on the Lord. It is not business as usual for us. But I believe God is in it, with us at this time, and he has allowed everything that has happened for our good. This morning, when I woke up, the Lord spoke some things to my heart that I believe I'm to share with you. He asked me, do you remember what I did for Noah's family? I knew immediately what the Lord was saying to me, and I got really excited. Listen to this portion of scripture from Genesis chapter 7, beginning with verse 13. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark. They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing, that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh, in which is the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him. Listen carefully. And the Lord shut him in. Now the flood was on the earth 40 days. It was the Lord who shut in Noah and his family as he took care of business upon the earth. Then the Lord reminded me of two other scriptures that I want to share with you right now. The first one occurred on the evening of the day that Jesus rose from the dead. It's important to say that the disciples of Jesus knew by this time that Jesus had risen from the dead and that he was alive when he appears to them. This is John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. The second scripture I want to read to you right now is found in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. How many of you have been in one place day after day after day for the past few weeks. We need to understand something about the upper room and the gathering that was happening there that day. It was not a public gathering. It was a gathering of Jesus' closest followers, but there was still great fear about what the Jews 
wanted to do to silence the followers of Jesus. You see, the religious leaders were having to deal with rumors that Jesus had risen from the dead. Some of their people were starting to believe that it was true. If the religious leaders could silence the followers of Jesus, they could silence the rumors about the resurrection. Do you remember that it was the religious leaders who had gone to Pontius Pilate and demanded that guards be posted at the tomb of Jesus? Why? Because there's rumors that, that Jesus is going to be uh, from the dead, and we don't want anyone to begin to believe those lies. And uh, so, yes, guards were posted there. Now, as far as the disciples go, I want you to see something here. You need to see that although the Great Commission had been given to the disciples by Jesus after his resurrection, the disciples had been commanded to wait for the promise of the Father. And there it is again. Go, but wait. Go, wait. And so this day of Pentecost, when it finally arrived, until then, there, there was no preaching by the followers of Jesus. There were no public gatherings. And they had to take great care if they met in large numbers. Does that sound familiar to anybody? I want you to go with me to John chapter 21, and we're going to pick up the story of Peter. Before I read in John chapter 21, I want you to, to understand something. Right now, we're all living in a time when fear is just consuming our world. But those of us who put our trust in the Lord can have peace in the midst of this storm and a sense of great anticipation for what God is doing and for what God is going to do. Let me ask you some questions. Do you think there was anything new after Noah and his family left the ark? <laughs> Everything was new. Do you think there was anything new in the lives of the disciples after they saw the living Christ for themselves? Absolutely. Their hope and their faith were restored. Do you think there was anything new after the waiting was over on the day of Pentecost? Absolutely. The disciples of Jesus were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They poured out of that upper room, exalting God, praising him in all these different languages that people from all over the world could understand. And after Peter preached, 3,000 came to the Lord and the church was born. Now, there's something that I want to say to you today. God always does something after a season of waiting. If the waiting doesn't kill you. Remember, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And in Psalm 27, verse 13, King David wrote these words. He said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, let me take you back to the story of Peter in John chapter 21. We'll begin with the verse, first verse. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, 
we are going with you. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. I believe that when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than these? He was referring to the fish. He was referring to uh, the net filled with 153 fish. And he was asking Peter to, to make a commitment. He was asking Peter, are you still with me? And Peter answered correctly. I wanted to read this portion of scripture to you and point out a few things to you. Peter's decision to go fishing again, listen to me, was made after he was given the Great Commission and while waiting for the promise of the Father to be endued with power from on high. They were waiting. And I believe Peter got impatient and started looking to the past started looking at something he was good at, started looking at something that he could do, and we need to be careful not to do the same thing. Peter going back to fishing represents us trying to make something happen. When God hasn't made something happen yet, even if he's promised us he would. See, we must never forget what the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. How would you feel if you heard that 
that, oh, Pastor Steve Gonzalez is, is playing at bars to make ends meet. That's what I used to do before I knew the Lord. And I could do it again. I still remember some of those songs. But how would you feel if you knew that I had gone back or fallen back on that, on that, that skill that I have after serving the Lord for almost 40 years? You see, the Lord calls us to commit constantly. Are you still with me? Are you still in it? And I am. We have to be careful in this season of waiting on the Lord. During this time <clears throat> that we're not able to conduct our services at church, we each still need to make time to fellowship with the Lord and to be in his word. We need to be in one accord and not begin to turn on one another both at home and in the body of Christ. As the pastor of presence of the Lord Christian Church, I have chosen to abide by the rules and recommendations made by our local government to not conduct services at our church during this time when there's so much sickness out there. There are some ministers who would say that I have given in to fear and I am failing the Lord miserably because we're not having church. I want to say that I choose to walk in the fear of the Lord and obey what I see in the scriptures. But, more than that, this is a time when we must respectfully disagree, if we disagree, but continue to walk in love instead of judgment. The enemy and the world find it really good entertainment to watch Christians tearing each other down. It's, it's great entertainment for the world. Church, it all comes down to this verse found in 2 Corinthians 13, 5 and 6. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. In closing today, I want to say that I'm excited to see what the Lord will do and what the Lord has done during this time. As I share this message with you, I have no idea when the restrictions will be lifted, but there's a joy and a gratitude in my heart for all that the Lord is doing to get us ready for the next step that we're to take for his honor and his glory. So today, if you have made at any point in your life the decision to follow Jesus, renew that decision again right now and look forward to what God has for you in the coming days, the coming weeks, the coming months. And if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, but you want to, ask a Christian that you know to be walking with the Lord to pray for you. And then come join us as part of God's family. You're welcome. Jesus will never cast away anyone who comes to him. I want to just say to all of you, God has something really good for you, but wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Trust him because his promises are good and just wait on the Lord. Amen? Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are seeing us through this time. Father, we do pray for those who have passed away, for their families. We pray for those in our church who um, are struggling uh, financially 
And Lord, I want to thank you for those who have been so faithful to support us during this time. We need that support, Lord. And your church is coming through, and I thank you for that. I give you glory for that, Lord. But Father, we do pray that you would allow us to come home and to begin to have church again, to worship you with all our hearts. Your word says that you are enthroned on the praises of Israel. You are enthroned on the praises of your people. And your people are hungry to be together again, Lord. Father, move upon the earth. Father, banish this sickness from among us. You're the healer. And Lord, move upon the hearts of those who are in authority to make the right decisions. Decisions that honor you, glorify you. And Father, we, we just will wait and trust in you with much thanks and much praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us today. God bless you.